So I've decided that I want to try and make a competitive cosplay. Which, if you don't know, cosplay competitions are essentially if someone went like, yeah, you know that like really fun hobby that we like to do all about just crafting and dressing up as your favorite character? What if we took that and just made it like way more stressful? Like you're going to have to go into a room with a bunch of people who know way more than you and you're going to have to explain the last few months of work in like three minutes and then you have to go on stage in front of an audience who are definitely going to be judging comparing you to everyone else. Doesn't that sound fun? Haha, <laughs> yeah, why am I putting myself through this again? Because we're a competitive person who's constantly seeking the validation of our work from other people. Oh yeah, that... that pretty much checks out. You see, the problem is though, is that I have absolutely no idea where to even get started on this. Like, yeah, I have a crafting channel and I've done some cosplay stuff before, but it's like it doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. No one really checks your credentials before you make a video on YouTube, now do they? Am I even qualified to enter? What are they judging you on? How do you win? What is the process? That's why I called in the experts. I called in not one, not two, but three experts who have competed and judged in different cosplay competitions. Because I need a, I need all the help I can get. Now before talking to our experts to learn everything we can about the world of competitive cosplay, some of you might be wondering, Jess, did that nice looking desk behind you get even taller from the last shot? <laughs> so crazy that you just naturally brought that up because this video's sponsor is FlexiSpot. If you haven't heard of FlexiSpot, their whole mission is making stylish and comfortable furniture that is never stuck in one position. So when they reached out to me asking if I would like one of their standing desks, I was honestly so hyped, especially since during the week I spend a majority of my day at my office job sitting at a desk. So you know what's the last thing I want to do when I get home? It's to continue sitting at a desk. But funny enough, I was already getting the itch to just go ahead and redesign my whole room anyway, and honestly, assembling the desk was probably the easiest part of this whole process. It only took me about 30 minutes to assemble, with no help from Mumbo, might I add. So this is the E7 standing desk. I chose the dark bamboo desktop and black frame. However, they do have quite a few options to choose from, so you can pick something that matches a bit more of your aesthetic. And after getting everything set up, I am absolutely in love with the way that everything looks. It's a workspace that actually allows me to feel Feel productive. I really love the sleek look of it and the desktop is super spacious. The keypad controller allows you to set custom heights so you can go from standing to sitting or somewhere in between with just a touch of a button. I'm one of those people that love to cross their legs while they sit, so actually being able to adjust the height to where I'm comfortable has been so nice. They were also really nice and threw in a few accessories like a drawer and this dual monitor stand which is so high quality and allows me to be even more flexible with my setup. Not being limited to either sitting or standing has just been such a nice change of pace. Whether it's editing, gaming, or just chilling, I genuinely can't imagine going back to a regular desk. So if you're looking to mix up your setup with a new desk, make sure to click the link in the description to check out all that FlexiSpot has to offer. And thank you once again to FlexiSpot for the amazing desk and also sponsoring this video. All right. Right, now it's time for me to get absolutely roasted by some experts. <laughs> I am Mad Dog or Telekinetic Maniac, which is a name that I chose in high school and very annoying to spell and say, and I should have changed it by now. I've been cosplaying for 11 years and kind of since then got my degree in fashion design and that has essentially kind of taken over my cosplay life. So I'm Alexandria Lane. I've competed in multiple contests, judged multiple contests. I've done um, historical cosplays, video game cosplays, movie cosplays, my home base is like textile heavy sewing embroidery like stuff like like this you know so <laughs> yeah so I'm Casey Renee cosplay I've been cosplaying for over a decade I really like judging I really like competing I've won over 15 awards and I've judged probably 30 contests so far recently I did judge the crown championships of cosplay uh, how did you first get into competing in general obviously you have a very long list but how did you get started <laughs> honestly the first competition I ever did. It was a small convention. It was Northwest Indiana Comic Con and they needed 30 contestants for their contest. I know the owner and they were like, hey, do you mind just like competing in this just so we have like a full contest and you know, whatever. And I ended up winning best craftsmanship. It kind of like opened my eyes to this idea of like, oh wait, you can win awards for like sewing well? <laughs> I think my first one was in fall of 2015. I cosplayed Impa from Hyrule Warriors and it was a terrible experience like all around. Like I had like a kind of a panic attack in front of the judge. 
was <laughs> it was it was quite an experience. I wanted to challenge myself, so I did Warbler work for the first time. That was like my intro to Warbler costume, and boy, howdy, did it look like my first use of Warbla. Like, I, like, didn't really even know a way to talk about my costumes. Like, guys, don't talk about the judges' work in your pre-judging. Like, because that is that is literally all I did. I kept sitting there being like, I used Warbla, but I really love the fabric you used on your costume. <laughs> like, what what an absolute waste of a first contest. Um, But so I have technically been competing since then, and I'm happy to say the next competition was not nearly as bad. What are the different types of competitions that they have in cosplay? Okay, that's a good question. Like, first and foremost, cosplay competitions are for fun. If you feel like, oh, I'm gonna get into cosplay competition to pay my rent, <laughs> it's time to reevaluate your priorities because it's not gonna pay your rent. It's gonna take more money out of your wallet for paying your rent. Okay, a cosplay competition usually takes place at a convention, Comic-Con, D23, Dragon Con. Some are just like small and it's like a walk-on and you can like sign up that day. And some you have to really prepare for in advance. A first time competitor would probably be like really welcome and like feel like they've achieved a lot at their local con, whereas at like a larger con, they may feel just like absolutely completely run over if it's their first convention ever. Can you explain the different uh, skill levels slash like qualifications of competitions? Yeah, so most competitions have multiple skill levels, which is like a novice. These are beginners that maybe have never competed before. When it comes to novice, they can be anywhere on their crafting journey and because they don't know where they're, they are, they're entering into the novice category. Judges will be happy if you like barely sewn something together and it's like staying on your body. Like <laughs> A plus, awesome job, great novice work. Sometimes novices are really good because they've been making costumes for a long time. It's just that they've never competed. I would say most people, if you're just starting out, novice is great. I've met people that have never competed before, but they've been working on this costume for two years and it is immaculate. And they're like, I think I'm a novice. And they get in there and they're like, okay, I maybe should have placed myself differently, but how do you know until you've experienced it, right? Uh, then you have journeyman, which is your intermediate. You typically get to journeyman when you have won an award as a novice, like either a best novice or first place type award. And then you have master class or professional, and that's your top class. Normally you've won three or four awards by that point. Once you're in master class at like a thousand person con, you're still technically master class at a hundred thousand person Con. How does judging take place in like pre-judging versus like the stage segment? How do those work? So pre-judging is like both one of my favorite and least favorite things because it's it's so nerve-wracking to actually just walk up to all the judges and, and tell them about your thing. Um, but that's what you do. That's what pre-judging is. <laughs> so as a competitor, essentially what pre-judging is like is you just, you get a time slot and you go and you talk to the judges. You essentially have to like give your pitch like try and sell your costume the best you can. And I'd highly recommend doing that, like not pointing out your flaws. Don't talk about the things that you don't like about your costume. Never point out your mistakes. Judges can miss things. And if you were to point out, oh, this dagger is broken, so I'm not gonna take it out of the pocket, you could get docked points. Tell us something about your costume. What do you like? And they'll be like, well, what I don't like is, and it's just like, <laughs> no, no, because now that's what I'm gonna focus on. They're more excited to hear you go in depth about like what you really Really enjoy about it because that's really what they're looking to award even because there's flaws in everyone's costume. I like to have something in my mind to like talk about and go down the list of like I made this, I made this, I made this, I made this. Some people have build books that they bring in and it's like I this is the process because obviously the judges weren't there with you as you were sewing and creating your masterpiece, like it's like a conversation. It's like a back and forth. They're gonna wanna come up and see you. So they're gonna come up like behind the tables and they're gonna like flip your seams, make sure everything looks nice. I'm one of those people that I'm like, yes, look at everything. <laughs> but everybody is like that and that's okay. You don't have to say yes to everything. You can say, no, I'd prefer if you guys didn't touch me. You can look, but I'm not taking anything off and that is totally fine. Good judges will ask 
questions as well to help guide you so that um, they can also score you accordingly versus like not. This is actually the most important time of the entire contest. Some contests have like you do skits on stage and then there's the other ones where you just walk on stage. That's your time to show off. Typically the judges have already picked the winners by then even though like the show always makes it look like the judges have to deliberate mm -hmm. but behind the scenes the judges typically already know who the winner is when you go on stage. What are some of the things that judges will be looking for and scoring you for and what are some things that they won't be looking for? In my brain what I just heard is how do you win? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, what, not saying that I'm asking that. What but. do what do I do to come out of this with third, second, first, best in show? The number one thing that I look for is cleanliness in the sense of execution. So if you sewed something by hand, how even are your stitches? 3D printed something, how smooth are your seams? How clean are your seams on the inside? How clean is it on the outside? If it's supposed to be fraying and falling apart, how well is that executed? And then I think about difficulty. So difficulty is really the last kind of thing I think about. And by difficulty, I mean how many different types of techniques were done mastering fully. So like somebody maybe did embroidery, but the embroidery looks really bad. That's not mastering the embroidery and that might take points off. In my opinion, a simple cosplay executed perfectly will always score higher in my book than a complex costume executed poorly. They aren't expecting you to both like be a seamstress and be an embroiderer and be an armor maker and be a prop maker and like so on and so forth, right? It's when in reality, a lot of judges just want you to do the things that you do really well, like really cleanly. I had to learn at once I got to masters where to lean into. I was like trying to make props and armor and that's not something I liked or something I was very good at. And I thought that's how you win, but that's not. Like you can win doing props and armor or you can win sewing. Even if it looks simple on the surface, even especially if it looks simple from stage, it can be very hard as an audience member to see things from stage and have a clue how much went into them. And I like, I've been guilty of it. I've been like, why did that costume win? I don't get it. And then I'll like see it up close and I'll be like, they deserved it. <laughs> We're not looking at like, if your budget was high enough for the competition. We're not looking at your body shape, if you even like resemble the character. We're looking at like the things you made. I think it's Ganoza Costuming who first said that the costume, like picking your competition build is what's gonna make or break your competition build. I think it's important to pick a winning design, something that you can embellish, something that has multiple different textiles and techniques in it. So it's not to say that like a smaller costume can't win, it's just to say that know and understand kind of the competition you're going into or be like me and just keep trying to outdo yourself and <laughs> until you find yourself on projects that take well over a thousand hours and two years to make. <laughs> uh, what is it that draws people to compete rather than just like making a cosplay for fun? Because it kind of just sounds like, hey, you know that fun hobby we do? Yeah, what if we made it stressful? I don't really know. <laughs> um, because I'll be really honest, there are literally no awards out there that pay back the time and money you put into a con like a costume. I'm gonna be so honest with you, and I, like, cause we're friends now, I can tell you anything. Um, <laughs> it feels so awesome to show off something that you've worked so hard on. You are like dressed as this character and you're larger than life and you're shiny and sparkly and wide and you need help getting around and people wanna stop and take your picture as much as you're competing against the other competitors, you are mostly competing against yourself. You are probably very much looking for a sense of community. Like you probably want to get involved with a convention and the community that is a part of it. Something that is very much a part of the competition experience, but is not really there on paper is the green room. It's a lot of people who love craftsmanship and they want to see how their craftsmanship stacks up and they want to talk to people about the techniques they're doing and learn new techniques and they want to talk about just their day and what fandom they're into. Uh, the last contest I did, I did a Final Fantasy XIV skit and it was just everyone who plays Final Fantasy XIV just like clustered around our little skit. And it was just genuinely like the best part of the weekend. But I also found early on that I like it because I kind of like the people you get to meet. I think that people that sign up for contests are really interesting and they are really good at what they do. And so I got better at what I did by like surrounding myself with people that also 
do what I do. I kind of now compete because I want to see if I can outdo myself. Like I feel like I kind of get stagnant, kind of plateau artistically. So I'm like, all right, let's do a competition build and let's see what new things we can learn and how much I can challenge myself. All right, so if people want to learn even more information about competitions or just see more of your projects, where can they find you? Um. How do I do a shout out? What's like the most like unawkward way of doing that? <laughs> um, please subscribe. Uh, take You're like, <laughs> I'm Alexandria Lane. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, like YouTube, all the platforms. Come hang out, wear your pajamas. We're here to have a fun time. Yeah, you can find me like pretty much all over the internet. YouTube is my baby. It's pretty much like my little like artist haven thing where I do a ton of talk about like cosplay contests and I talk about my own work and have like super Con vlogs and stuff, and yeah, that is that. That's that telekinetic maniac. So I'm Casey Renee, and my channel is Casey Renee Cosplay. I also have an Instagram where I do little short things. I'm also working on Glinda's bubble dress from Wicked, which I've been working on for almost two years now. Most of my content is about that lately, so that's where you can find me. If you're interested in learning any more about cosplay contests or just anything about cosplay in general, please go out and check out their channels. Obviously, they know way more than I do. And thanks to them, now I know what I'm actually signing myself up for. Anyway, now with my knowledge from the experts, let's get planning. So first things first, I need a competition I can actually compete at. And this is important because it will determine our timeline and also determine like how big of a competition it's going to be. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that my main convention I go to is Megacon Orlando. Megacon is my like hometown convention, which makes it sound small. No, it is freaking huge. It's too big for its own good. Being like such a huge convention, I'm not aiming to win. But the novice class, on the other hand, that seems reasonable. And also timeline-wise, Megacon's normally in like beginning or middle of summer, so that should give me plenty of time to work on this cosplay. Never mind, it starts at the beginning of February. Why the beginning of February? Why is it so early this year? Okay, um, end of September now, so it'll be November, October, December, and January. So that would give four months, which normally I only give myself like a month to work on a cosplay, so it sounds like a lot of time. But if I'm putting as much effort and time into this as possible, while also doing a full-time job, while also making videos, oh boy. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm still gonna aim for Megacon. However, I will probably pick a backup convention just in case. <laughs> I'm the kind of person where if you give me a project and you give me a week to do it, I'll get it done. But then if you give me the same project and give me a month to do it, I'll take the full month to do it. So maybe this is actually a good thing. Probably not, but maybe it is. So convention, checked off. Now, what cosplay am I actually gonna make? As advised by the experts, I need to find a character with a design interesting enough that allows me to really explore different skill sets, but also is a character that I like so I don't lose motivation while I'm doing it. And it's also a character that other people like because, you know, I want people to stop and ask me for pictures, you know, the whole validation thing. Also, I want this character to have a lot of references because I really want to challenge myself to make something as accurate to the screen as possible. Because something I haven't done in a lot of my past cosplays is really challenge myself to make something similar to the screen, especially with a lot of my Minecraft cosplays. Also, I'm sorry if you're new here and you got this far in the video just to now realize that I did Minecraft cosplays, I can understand your distress. <laughs> Don't worry, this one's not going to be Minecraft. Because most of those designs were kind of like fan made, I didn't really have to worry about being accurate. So with all that being said, the character that I have in mind is probably going to surprise you. This next part is going to sound like an ad, I swear it isn't, but do y'all remember that Disney made a gotcha game called Disney Mirrorverse? Yeah, think Genshin Impact, but just take out all the open world and the plot, replace everyone with Disney characters, and then you have Disney's latest cash grab, where you can take random characters and fight against evil Judy Hops, which, which is actually part of the game. But my god, are the character designs so freaking good. Because taking all these characters that normally have super strict guidelines and then putting them into a universe where they're all like warrior guardian people is it's so good. All these designs of these beloved Disney characters and also The Rock is there for some reason but look at Kermit the Frog as a warrior it's so cool. And out of all of them my favorite is Ariel. Look at the crown, the pearlescent armor, the anime ponytail. Just all of it. 
is so good. And the crazy thing is, I've never been really a Disney princess girly, let alone thinking that I would ever do a Disney princess cosplay. One, normally they're always just giant ball gowns and I, I don't know how to sew. And secondly, obviously I don't exactly have the same body type as Ariel. As in I don't have a tail, I know I've always been so self-conscious about it. <laughs> but seriously, no matter what body type you are, you should be able to cosplay whoever you want and who will ever make you feel confident. And you know, just something about this design makes me want to go for it. And also from a technical standpoint, it seems achievable. Like once you do a breakdown of the whole cosplay, wig, crown, harpoon? I guess it's a harpoon. Armor, some sewing, and then I'll have to figure out something alternative to do for the tail. But it feels like just the right amount where it'll be a challenge, but it's not overwhelming, so I'll be able to really focus on the pieces that I'm making. So that's the plan. I'm going to spend the next four months and probably spend hundreds of dollars in order to become a warrior fish Disney princess. You know, like an adult. The only thing left to do is to is to start it. And this feels really weird because normally at the end of my videos I'm showing off the end result of a project, but in this one the project's just beginning. So if you want to join me on this silly journey of becoming a Disney Princess Fish Warrior, I'll be posting and making videos about it. I still have other like bookbinding projects I'll be doing in the meantime while working on it, but if you want to see updates on the cosplay please make sure to subscribe. Now in the meantime if you want to learn more about cosplay competitions or just want more cosplay content in general please go and check out all of our experts channels and actually out of the two years I've been doing YouTube this is the first time I've actually collabed with someone and all of them were so nice to talk to maybe the true satisfying ending to this video is not a project to reveal but the friends that we made along the way <laughs> yeah sure that works for an outro I don't know